very solidly in the chair with about a fist worth of space behind us and the back of the chair. You want your hips to really sink in and you want to make sure that your feet touch the ground. So if they're not touching the ground or they are higher or they're lower than your hips, I mean, not lower, yeah, uh, lower than your hips, we wanna use the blanket under our feet to sort of raise the feet up and be able to press the feet into the ground. You can also try coming up as long as you're solidly placed in the chair, you can come a little bit off the chair. And you know, I think the further back in the chair you go, the higher your feet are. So you just wanna make sure your knees are even with your hips and then just make sure, like we'll, we'll get an alignment even before we start to breathe. Rib cage, you know, do a check-in with your body. Rib cage over hips, shoulders over ribs and hips, head smack in the middle. Take a deep breath. I need to take a deep breath because I had a stressful morning waking up at six o'clock onto the Florida website to try to get a vaccine, which I was on for two hours and unable to get a place in line. Um, so let's just breathe for a moment. And yesterday, Addy was with me yesterday. Yesterday we did some belly breathing. I think today we're gonna breathe while we raise our arms and uh, you know inhale them up, exhale them down really slowly. So let's start with that. Hands down on either side, the palms face out. And we're gonna take a deep breath through the nostrils, keeping our body aligned and over the hips, shoulders are back as we raise the arms slowly. Breathe in, 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 touch your hands, hold for a second and breathe out. And then turn the palms down as you come down. Long exhale, fill the belly. Come back up again with an inhale. Belly gets filled up, you're filling the diaphragm and exhale. Again, palms turn up, inhale. And palms turn down, exhale. One more, inhale. And palms face down as we exhale. We'll start with some shoulder circles. So hands are on your thighs and you're gonna take your shoulders, bring them up towards your ears and then towards the front. So these are circles. So we take them back, up and forward. Back, up, forward. Back, up, forward and then go the other direction. So up, back, up, and back and we inhale as we come up with the shoulders. We exhale as we let them back down. Inhale up, exhale back, one more. Inhale up, exhale back. So we warm up the body. It's really important. I'm studying again and, I'm and, and my studies right now in yoga are all about injuries. And they all talk about, you know, it's so important in a class to warm up every part of the body before you put any tension or strain on it. Not that we're gonna put a lot of tension or strain, but take your ear and bring it, leave your shoulders down. So make sure you're conscious that your shoulders are away from the ears. And at the same time, you wanna bring your ear towards the shoulder that's down. We're not bringing the shoulders up, we're bringing the ear down right side first. We inhale as we come from right, to center, your chin is down by your chest. This is to stretch the neck, but we're not going back and then go the other side as you exhale. Inhale to front, exhale. Inhale to front, exhale. So we used to go all the way around. When I learned, started learning yoga, we always did the neck all the way around. And now we learn that taking the neck in that back position is not great for a lot of people and it could pinch a nerve. So we just go forward.
come center, deep breath. Take your right hand and bring it to your left shoulder and your left hand and bring it to your right shoulder. Give your shoulders a little squeeze and a hug. So you can actually take yourself around and hug yourself. Really important while we're in a pandemic and we're hardly seeing anybody that you give yourself a little squeeze. Now take your arms back out and just do it in the other direction because in yoga, we go one way, we have to go the other. Okay, take your arms straight out in front of you. And there's two ways, and I say this every time because I believe in the importance of it. So in yoga, we always talk about strength and relaxation with every pose. So let the bottom part of your body sink into the chair. Let your feet press into the floor softly, but take your arms and let's put some energy into the arms as we put them straight in front of us. You don't have to lock the elbows if that's uncomfortable for you, but if you put some energy into your arms, you are strengthening the arms at the same time. Our palms are flat out as if we're holding a wall in front of us and our fingers are spread really wide. Spread those fingers really wide, get a good stretch in that palm. These are webs, we, we name them after animals. I say this every time, I'm sorry if it's boring already. Take your hands and go into claws. You just bend the fingers. This really helps with arthritis, your sort of, you know, squeeze, do the beak movement. This is for the thumb. Actually, we're gonna add something now. So just practice using your thumb with your, take your right hand and bring it over your left thumb and take the thumb and see if you can bring it down towards the wrist. No pain in yoga. We don't wanna add any pain anywhere in the body, but see if you can give that thumb a nice stretch in the opposite direction and then do it on the other hand. And then let's take our hands into fists or paws and arms are still really strong and we're making a really tight fist as if there was a wall in front of us and we're not punching because we're not doing the movement but we're just pressing up against the wall. Okay, hands on your thighs. We're gonna do a little torso circling. So we're gonna take our torso and bring it and the bend is at the hip flexor, it's not at the waist. So when you lean forward, you lean where the thighs and the hips, you can almost feel your pelvic bones right there. You're bending right there and you're leaning over the front body. Very easy to do the breath here because we are going to inhale as you come across the front body through the nostril. And as you lean back, you exhale. So forward, inhale, back, exhale. Forward, inhale and back, exhale. Now, when you come to the back, go in the other direction, but we're not changing the breathing. It's still inhale over the front body and exhale, but we have to do it in the other direction. So you may have hopefully a strap. Okay, come center, torso aligned over the hips. You might have a strap, a belt, or a scarf to use. And if not, that's fine. I'll show you without as well. But let's take that in your left hand, take your knee to your chest in your right hand. And you might feel this. Look, when you're bringing your knee up to your chest, you might feel it in your lower back. You might feel it in your hips. You know, your body is connected by a system of fascia. Fascia are like those, like when you cut into a piece of chicken, I hate to compare us to a chicken, but we are animals. It's that white film that's over the muscle. We have that connected all through our body. So when you take one part of your body and keep hugging that right knee to the chest, you're, you're pulling on another part. Take the strap, belt, or scarf, wrap it around the ball of the foot, two hands, holding the belt and bring that foot straight out. You can keep a micro bend in the knee, especially if you have any knee issues, but take that foot and flex and point. Now, if you don't have a belt or a scarf, that's okay. You can hold your leg up and the thigh and the calf. You just wanna keep a straight spine. When I tell you that I have to remind myself. So we're just pointing and flexing. And then release the leg, let it come down, press it into the floor and take the left leg up to the chest. While we're here, you might as well point and flex the foot as you hug it into the chest. Get that strap, belt or scarf ready. 
And if you don't have one, I'll just demonstrate what it's like to not have one. Bring the foot straight out. You wrap the belt scarf around the ball of the foot, two hands and, or hold on to the calf, the thigh. Make sure your spine is straight and you are aligned. And we're gonna point and flex the foot. Point and flex. Okay, release the foot, let it come down and meet the other one. We're just gonna take the spine in its seven directions. We're warming up the vertebrae. So the first one is inhale as you let your hands touch the sky and you're going to keep your shoulders down. So now we keep the shoulders down, but the hands are pointing and rising as we lift the torso. So you're really adding some fluff. And I, I took a yoga class last week where the teacher, instead of saying, get tall and put some space, she, she talked about adding fluff between the vertebrae. So we, are, we sit all day, we stand, we compress our spine, it's gravity. Now we're gonna lift so we can see if we can get some space between all of those bones in the spine. Keep lifting, add a half inch to your, to your height. Okay, hands onto your thighs, slide them down to your knees and we're bending at the hip flexor into a forward bend. Now, what you keeping your, your back straight so you might only be able to go right here. It might just be a slight bend where this is a forward bend. So we don't wanna round the spine right now, but maybe you can come down a little further. Come back up, straight spine. Take your hands behind you to the back of the chair and see about again, bending at the hip flexor. This is not bending at the waist or at the back and, and compressing the spine anywhere. This is a straight spine that we're just leaning back. Keep the neck in line with the spine. So your neck is long and just it's one straight line. Cup center. Take your right hand, hold the chair on the right side. With your left hand, if you have high blood pressure, we're not taking the hand over the shoulder height. You might just wanna keep your hand on your waist. You might wanna put it on your shoulder, but otherwise take your hand up by the ear and we're leaning to the right. Addy, after this, I want you to tell me if, I'm, if, it, if the mirroring is better when we, I took off the mirroring on the Zoom. So you'll let me know if this is a better way to do it. Feel that stretch. So we are bending to the right, but just notice that the stretch is on the left side. It's the opposite way that we go. Come back up, left hand comes onto the side of the chair, right arm comes up or wherever you want the right arm to go. And we lean to the left for a side stretch on the left. Seven movements of the spine, up, forward, back, side to side. And only in yoga do we twist, we're about to twist. So yesterday I showed a new way to do this twist movement. I think we'll try that again today. I'm just gonna turn my chair on to the side so you can see me demonstrate. You're gonna lift your hips up and bring yourself to the side of the chair. You're gonna, to, to the right, let's start with the right. Doesn't really matter. If you're on the left, you'll do the right after. So you don't have to, but just, so whatever side you're on, you take that hand and you hold the back of the chair. So you're, lift, you're placing that hand behind you. And the, in my case, the left hand, so the one further, the shoulder that's facing, you know, the, the, where my legs would be, is holding the other side of the chair. Um, the first thing we do always when we inhale is we get tall. So find some lift on the inhale and on the exhale, you're gonna twist so that you almost face the back of the chair. You're using, the hand that's further back, so in my case, the right hand, and I'm pushing that, see my hands open, I'm pushing that away from me so that I maintain my alignment. And then I'm using the left hand to pull myself around. As you inhale, get tall. And as you exhale, see if you can relax a little bit more into the twist. Twisting is so great, it um, massages your, internal organs. Okay, we're gonna go to the other side. I'll take the chair straight again so you can see, but come to the other side of the chair. Again, oh, you're gonna see my back now. You know what? I'm gonna turn the chair completely around so you can see what it looks like this way. 
but of course now I'm confused about which side I was on. Okay, I think I have to go here. Um, so your hands are on either side of the back of the chair. Your legs are facing the side. You're going to inhale and get tall, exhale and twist around. Pushing with one hand, pulling with the other. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, relax and twist a little bit more. And release. Come center again. Chair comes back here. Okay. We're gonna do a little cat cow. So you're in your chair, you've got that, your face, your legs are facing front again. Hands are on your knees. You're gonna pull the belly towards the spine. So you are rounding your back right now like a cat. You're tucking the pelvis. So you're actually tucking the pelvis in the chair. Your chin comes to your chest as you exhale. So you're almost letting the air out of your belly so you can bring it closer. This is core work. As you inhale, you're gonna bring your navel towards your knees. You're gonna stick the tailbone out behind you and you're gonna look up to where the wall meets the ceiling. And that's a cow. Think about the back of a cow. So we're gonna do cat cow, inhale and exhale. and then come to neutral. And now we're warmed up and ready to move. So the first thing we're gonna do is a sun salutation in the chair. So hands to heart center. Good morning, everybody. Here we go. On the inhale, hands come to the sky. Look up at your hands. Exhale, swan dive them down, bring them to your knees. Take your legs out just a little bit, slide them down for that forward bend. We did this earlier, keep a flat back, bend at the hip crease. Come halfway up, straight back. You're still leaning forward, but it's less of a lean. If you were, if you were standing on the floor, this would be a flat back instead of a forward bend. We're going to come into Cobra. So you're going to let your belly go towards your, towards your thighs as your tailbone sticks out behind you and you look up. It's a little bit of a back bend towards the ceiling. Now we're coming into plank. So hands, we did this movement. We've, we built all of this up before. We're just stringing them together. Hands are webbed out. You're gonna bring your feet now under your knees and come up onto the balls of your feet as if you're in a plank position. Get some energy into the limbs. So you're pressing into the floor with the balls of the feet. You're actually, your calves are engaged. Your arms are engaged and your fingers and your palms are engaged. We're gonna move that up into down dog. So it's sort of gonna look a little bit more like a V shape. Your hands are coming up towards your ears. You're leaning forward and your legs are coming straight out and flat. So if you were on the floor and we tipped over, you'd be in a down dog position. Now your limbs might start to shake. This is actual work. This is not just sitting in a chair and hanging out here. We're moving, we're, ice, we're doing isometric exercise. Hold that down dog. Forward bend, so the hands now come to the knees. We slide down again. Come back up to center, hands come up, touch the sun and reverse swan dive them down to Tadasana. So in Tadasana, our mountain pose, press your, your, your ankles are under your knees, you're pressing your feet, widen the toes really wide, press into the floor, hands down by your side, palms out, shoulders down, back straight, put energy, into the arms and into the legs and actually into the glutes in your hips. You can actually feel you're tensing all of those muscles up, but you're relaxing your face. So shake your head no, shake your head yes. Make sure your, your head is relaxed. Okay, let's flow a little bit. So we're into dasana and now I just wanna turn you around so we can do some warrior poses. So turn to the right. Now, when you turn to the right, 
unlike when we did this before for the twist, you want, it, the idea is that you're solidly on the chair, but you wanna drop the left hip. So if you're turned towards the right, you wanna be able to drop the left hip almost off the chair to get some movement in that leg. So the front leg, let's look at the front leg alignment. Your knee is under, your, your ankle is under your knee and you're in a 90 degree angle. You can leave your left foot just like I have it right now. You can take a block and place the knee on it if that's comfortable for you. Whatever works, we don't wanna feel any extra pain. I, I can't say that enough. There's no pain in yoga. There's no, in, we don't wanna have anybody get injured. So not that anyone should get injured in my class. So, or if you, if you have the, I don't wanna say flexibility because it's not about fl flexibility, but maybe the functionality to take that left leg and bring it straight, turn the foot into a 45 degree angle. Your right hand is on the back of the chair. Your left hand comes to heart center as if, if, it, if you had two palms meet, you'd be in, in, you'd be in prayer hands. It's, we're doing half prayer hands. This is warrior one in the chair. You can also take that arm and bring it up if you have the functionality in the shoulder. Your gaze is straight ahead. So your gaze is over that front knee. Press that front foot into the floor. Now, before we even move, I'm bringing my hand back to half prayer. Before we even move from here, I want you to take that back foot and turn the foot so that it's facing the front of the room. That's the most important thing here because we're talking about, we don't wanna to torque the knee or torque the leg. As we take the left arm, bring it back behind you. So now the hip opens. Before with that foot like that, your hips were facing in the same direction. Now we're turning the foot so that the hips are open, backhand back, front hand in front of you. Your torso is in the middle. Your gaze is over the front fingers future, past, you're in the present, breathe here. Now you can sink your hips in, make sure that your front foot is at a 90 degree angle. Your back foot is straight. You can micro bend that knee and your arms are out shoulder height even and holding them up and putting some energy there. With an inhale, take that left hand, let it slide down the leg as the right hand comes over into peaceful warrior. Inhale, exhale, take that forearm, place it on the thigh as the left arm comes up over the ear in a straight line, fingertips to back pinky toe side of that straight leg. And inhale again for peaceful warrior. And exhale again for side angle. Come back to warrior two. So the whole time that foot is facing straight out, your hips are wide. So while you have your hips wide, I want you to take your hips, turn them so you're facing the front of the room and your legs are spread apart in wide angle pose. That means your hips, your hips, your heels are in and your toes are splayed out. First thing we'll do is goddess. So goddess arms. Now here's the thing with goddess arms. If you put your hands in prayer, Feel your shoulders. The whole thing with yoga is I want you to pay attention to your body, mind-body connection. Now take your arms out and put them in goddess. You feel those shoulders integrate down your back towards each other. So good for posture. We're sitting all day long. Even when we walk, we're on our phones, we're hunched over. Goddess arms, great for integrating those shoulders. Twist to the right. Goddess arms still up in the air. Come center and twist to the left. Come center. Hands to heart, feet together, arms down by your sides for Tadasana. We have the other side to do. So now we're gonna come, have all your props still by your side. We're coming to the other side. We're turning towards the left side. Position yourself so that your right hip can drop off the chair. But before we do that, you wanna take your Left foot, place the foot down strongly into the floor. Make sure your ankle is under your knee, your knees pointed straight ahead, and then drop the hip off. You can be here, you can take a block under the knee. If you can, take that leg straight out. It, it doesn't go out right behind you. We're not 
Our bodies aren't meant for splits. This is more, it's out towards the front of the room, 45 degree angle, because our hips are still gonna go into warrior one, so they're facing forward. Take the left hand, bring it to the chair behind you, and the right hand comes to half prayer for warrior one. Deep breath. Take another deep breath. I just saw, is it a flock of birds? I guess so, so a flock of pelicans go by and here they come again the other direction. Our arms coming overhead by the ear for warrior one. Before we first take that foot, the back foot and place it so that it's facing straight ahead, which opens up the hips. Take the right arm, swing it behind you. The left arm goes out in front of you. Your torso is in the center and we are in warrior two. So again, check your alignment, put some energy into the arms. If you could picture, I, I once saw you know, a, a yoga club video where they actually drew a lightning rod going where you're putting energy. So imagine there's a bolt of lightning going from fingertip to fingertip straight across you. Your chest is wide and you are actually working out your chest and your arms right now. Your gaze is over your front fingers. Inhale as we take that right hand, come down the leg as the left arm comes over for peaceful warrior. And exhale, take the forearm, place it on the thigh and right arm comes over the ear for side angle pose. Inhale, peaceful. Exhale, side angle. One more time, inhale, peaceful. Exhale, side angle pose. Come back to warrior two. So the right arm comes behind you and the left arm goes right in front. Get tall, get centered, deep breath. You are a warrior. Hands to heart center. As we take the hips, we bring that back foot in and we turn towards the front of the room in wide angle pose. We're gonna do something a little different here. If you have a yoga block, if you don't have a yoga block and you have a paper towel roll or a book, a nice thick coffee table book might do it if you can pile a few up here. We're gonna take a block and place it in the center. Sort of if we were in a forward bend, it'd be right under our face. Everybody's, you know, in when I first did yoga teacher training, they would say place it about 10 inches from wherever. And then I learned that we all have different bodies. If somebody's five feet tall, there, there won't be 10 inches if I'm five, six, there's a big difference. So you're gonna place it where it's comfortable and you can move it, it's not planted. So we are going to take our right arm and place it on the block. Now I'm already moving the block even closer. The idea is that you wanna bend at the hip crease, you wanna lean forward and you want that arm to be under your shoulder. Your torso is facing the floor, even though the block is in the center. What we're about to do is if you have the functionality to lift that left arm, you're going to, otherwise you're gonna take it and place it on your hip and just turn towards the left. If you can raise the arm, great. Try to keep the knees to their own side. I just, like my knee just went to collapse, trying to remember to keep it there and breathe. We tend to hold our breath when we're holding something that might be a little bit more difficult to just Remember to inhale and exhale. Come back to center and switch arms. So first get straight, which means plant the, plant the palm onto the block, lean forward at the hip crease. Start to turn towards the right. As you either raise the arm, you can actually hold the leg if that's more comfortable. We don't want you to torque anything. If you have the functionality to raise the right arm, you can do that. You can actually keep your arm by on your hip. You can turn your arm and, grab and, and wrap it. I don't know if you can see me doing it. Wrap it around your waist so that it's coming out here. See my hand, the other side. And come center, hands on your legs. Take a deep breath. We're gonna do eagle. So take your right arm, bring it in front of you and your left arm comes over the right, your shoulder height, and you're gonna take your arms and twist them together. Now you might just be right here, which is fine. If you have, and, and sometimes it's about the length of your limbs. If you have length in your limbs and you can do this, and sometimes it's compression issues, 
you are going to lift the elbows and see if you can bring the palms together for eagle arms. Now bring your legs together and if, moving the block away so you can see, so the right arm is under, which means we are going to plant the left leg in the center, push it into the floor, take the right leg and just cross it over. So many of us sit like this all day. If you have the ability to take that right leg and wrap the bottom foot around the left ankle, there we are in eagle. Remember to lift the elbows. It's a great shoulder stretch in the opposite direction of the way we normally stretch our shoulders, but this way is important too. So the first thing is unravel the legs, unravel the arms gently, hands on your thighs, switch the leg position just so you're ready with the right leg in the center. And let's take the left arm out in front of us. The right arm comes in front of it, on top of it. You twist the arms so that the palms are touching or if not, it's fine to just be here and have the elbows stacked and then lift up the sh so that your shoulder height, take the left foot, bring it across the right and then see if you can take that foot and wrap it around the bottom ankle. Now, if this is so easy for you and some of you it might be, you can lean forward at the hip crease because if we were standing an eagle, it's one thing to stand straight an eagle and do this, it's another to bend at the hip crease, almost like in a chair. So we are already in a chair, you might wanna just bend forward. So unravel the legs, uncross the arms, bring them on your thighs and just let them relax. Deep breath. Plant your left, your left foot's already in the center, so leave it there. Press the, widen the toes, get steady, make sure your ankle's under your knee. Take your right leg, let's raise it and hug it to the chest. And then take the right foot into your left hand as you take that ankle over the left thigh. We're coming into pigeon. So pigeon is easier in the chair than it is if you were on the mat. It's even easier if we were on our backs, but I think we can take this. You're gonna use your left hand onto your right foot to keep that foot flexed. You're gonna take your forearm and just, you don't ha have to give it a lot of pressure, but you will feel when you feel that hip stretch. This is a hip stretch. If you feel any pain, back off, but you're gonna lean forward at the hip crease to give your hip, your right hip, a little bit of a stretch here. Keep your torso tall and straight as you lean forward into pigeon on the right side. If you have knee issues, it's much easier to do it in the chair than if we were on the mat, but you shouldn't feel any pain. So if there's any pain back off, allow the forearm to come up, come straight, undo the legs and let's do the other side. So the right leg comes sort of center. The left leg comes up, let's hug it to the chest first. Take the foot into the right hand and bring it over your thigh. Flex, keeping your, your hand there to flex the foot. Let your forearm come onto the knee as you lean forward for pigeon on the left. Remember to breathe. And you can back off and let the legs come to neutral. So at this point, I'm not sure I, I, I can't see you. So I'm assuming, you know, I, I, just to give the proper instruction, if anyone does not want to come out of the chair, we're about to do a little balancing pose tree, but we can have the chair right there as a prop to hold on to. But if anyone doesn't want to come out of the chair, I'll just show you what tree is like in the chair. So Again, take that left foot and let's bring it a little more towards center. The right foot comes up onto the ball of the foot. See if you could turn the heel towards the inside of the foot and see if you can just raise that leg a little bit up. You can hold on to the chair or if you can, as long as you're steady, come into prayer hands. Now, for those of you who are able, let's come out of the chair. Hold on to the chair with your left hand just for steady support. You can let it go and just know it's there. Ground your left foot into the floor. So widen the toes first. You know, 
well, I'll do that to, on Friday. If anyone wants to take the Friday mat class, we're still working on, on body mind connection and keeping the big toe and the pinky toe down and the other three toes up, just try that later. Anyway, ground that left foot down, take the right foot, come up onto the ball of the foot, turn the foot in towards the left foot and slide it up the leg with the knee pointed out. You can let go if you can, but here's the thing. When we stand and we balance, lots of times your body's compensating for the fact if you just lifted a leg, you might throw that left hip out to just sort of counterbalance lifting. Remember to try to keep your, you can't see with this shirt on, keep your hips straight. It, the, the movement would be like this. I'm throwing my left hip out, which makes it much easier to balance. Keep the hip straight, keep your whole body aligned. Think about that alignment, rib cage over hips, shoulders over rib cage, everything over the ankle, you're one straight line. So when you do tree, you're really balancing more. Now, if you can put your hands in prayer, that's great you can let your branches wave in the wind. And if you're in the chair, you can still do this. Let your branches wave. Let's integrate the shoulders again down the back and come into goddess. Remember those goddess arms. They really do the job of pulling our shoulders back away from leaning over computers and phones. Or you can even clasp your hands behind you and throw the shoulders back. That's another way to integrate the shoulders down the back even deeper. Or just leave your hands on prayer. Remember, don't let that hip jut out and you can gently release and come down. If you fall out of it, it's fine, just smile. So if you're in the chair and I can't see if anybody's in the chair because my eyes are not good enough to see the little boxes, um, do the same thing on the other side. Plant the right foot down and we can do this while we stand as well. So you're holding on to the chair just for support, just to know it's there. You're gonna plant the right foot down, spread the toes, take the left foot, Turn it and same thing in the chair, turn the heel towards the inside of the leg. Don't let the hip jut out and lift that right foot, either the inside of the thigh, the inside of the calf, you can help it. I always need to help it. So, and it might be very different oops, than the other leg because our right side and our left sides are different. Uh, every day is different. You know, yesterday I might have been able to do something I'm not able to do today or vice versa. Every breath is different. That's the nature of our bodies. It's what you ate. It's the exercise that you did. It's how you slept. It's if you tired out your muscles. So again, if you have to hold on to the chair, it's all good. Or let your branches fly. It's windy out today. Let your arms come into goddess. You are goddesses. Take your arms and clasp them behind you. Deep breath and plant the other foot down gently. You can heel, you know, you can pedal the feet to try to bring back sensation so that your legs are even again. And then let's come back to the chair. So we're gonna take our right leg and lift it and bring your left arm out. So this is actually a balance pose as well. And what you're trying to do, you're in a chair, so you're thinking, I can't tip over, this isn't really balancing. Well, now I want you to focus on your hips in the chair. Are they even? You still have both hips planted in the chair. So work on that. Try to bring the navel towards the spine. Get some core in there. This is a balance pose. It's called bird dog. And we do this on the mat in the beginning of class, but this is great to do at the end too. You can actually feel your quad, your, you know, squeeze that leg. When you, when you work the quad, you're helping the knee, you're helping the ankle anywhere you might have an injury. Let the foot gently come down, let the arm gently come down and let's lift the left leg. Keep that foot flexed. Focus on your hips, are they even? Are you still planted in the chair and let your right arm come straight out in front of you. Deep breath, feel the core work, bring the navel towards the spine, focus on your belly, tighten the belly, tighten the thigh, tighten the calf, tighten the arm. And relax. All right, so um, in the instructions there, I, I asked everybody to grab a throw pillow from the couch or a pillow from your bed, but just to have a pillow, this is to make our shavasana really juicy. 
So you're gonna place it on your thighs. Your, knee, your ankles are under your knees. So your legs are in a 90 degree angle. You're still not leaning back in the chair. So you still have a fist width of space between you and the back. And that's great right now for Shavasana. So in Shavasana, what the purpose of Shavasana is not so you get a little nap at the end of a yoga class, but so that for a few moments, your body integrates all of the tensing and stretching and relaxing of the muscles. We just used almost every muscle in your body while we sat in a chair. Think about it, arms, shoulders, chest, hips, belly, legs, we used it all. So now place your hands on top of the pillow and we keep our palms up to just show gratitude in yoga. We Hand movements are called mudras and we open our hearts and open ourselves to gratitude and to what the, you know, to just the light out in, in the world. Lean back. So now you're, you're a fist distance away from the back of the chair. Let your shoulders lean back on the chair. Let your chin come towards the chest. If closing your eyes is comfortable for you, now's the time to do that. If not, just find a place straight ahead, a focal point and gaze softly so that really you're not really looking at that point. You're really going within or close your eyes. We're gonna scan the body and just try to be like a tension hunter is what I like to say. You're gonna start with your feet and work your way through your body, looking for tension anywhere so that you can relax it. So normally I go through the body parts and I'll do that as softly as I can to allow you to relax, but bring your attention to your feet and allow any tension there to relax. Work your way to your ankles and your calves, your thighs. If there's any tension, relax something. Your hips where it meets the chair, you could be tensing your muscles there. See if you can relax it. Bring some relaxation there to something that's tight. Your belly, your chest, your shoulders. We work those shoulders pretty hard. See if you can relax them. Your arms, we strengthen those arms with isometric exercise and they're used to being tense. Now see if you can totally relax them. Chest, jaw, your eyes, crown of your head. We'll take a few moments here. Just let everything sink in and integrate. If you'd like to stay here, feel free. It's a, it was a very short Shavasana, so you can stay happily. It's a nice place to be. If not, start by wiggling your toes and your fingers. Bring some attention to them. Let's raise our hands and stretch that spine up one more time. And then bring your hands to heart center. In yoga, we say namaste, which means that the light in me sees the light in you. It's, um, it's a saying that it's filled with gratitude. And today I'm filled with gratitude. Thank you so much for joining me. I know that you know our lives are all busy and you spending this time with me is, uh, I'm honored by it. So namaste, thank you so much. <laughs>